On this day, 50 years ago, history was made right here in the city of Columbus. The first woman to pilot an aircraft around the world landed here 50 years ago in an aircraft named the Spirit of Columbus. What is the Spirit of Columbus? Courage, like Jerry Mock, to do what others have not yet done. Determination and persistence to fulfill the goal and the dream that she had, we have in our city. Talent and sacrifice. And Doug Kreidler said she was a regular person with big dreams. That describes our city in many ways. Regular people with big dreams. Uh, Bill Kelly was, is a retired um, businessman who lives in Newark. And he saw Brutus at Ohio State in the newspaper and said, well, if she's good enough to do Brutus, she's good enough to do Jerry. So he contacted me, and that's how the first Jerry came about. And, and I guess because she lived in Bexley, even though she grew up in Newark, she did live in Bexley and flew in and out of Port Columbus. So that was when the idea came up that there really should be another Jerry at Port Columbus. And being that Jerry had never really been recognized, and it was important you know, that we, they got Port Columbus authorities on board that you know we really need to do something to make this make people understand that you know it wasn't Amelia Earhart <laughs> that flew around the world it was Jerry Mock. Uh, we are at Cooper Mill Bronze Works in Zanesville, Ohio, which is a foundry that I use for casting, and we're about to pour uh, a couple of Jerry Mock sculptures, which are their uh, maquettes for the large Jerry at the airport, and the Columbus Foundation is giving them out for Spirit of Columbus Awards. Uh, this is the clay model that I made of the Jerry Mock sculpture. This is the maquette. This is the clay model after we've taken a mold off of it, so it's, it's been through a lot. We make a rubber mold of this. We paint this with a liquid rubber and then put a plaster mother mold on it. The mother mold holds the rubber in place because we're gonna take the plaster off and the rubber off and then take the original out. Uh, this is a wax leg from the uh, sculpture I did for John Hinderer for his home in Granville. Um, it's a sculpture of a woman releasing a bird. After we make the rubber mold of the piece, we pour liquid wax in that rubber mold, and then this is the result of that. Um, after the piece has been, we, we cut it up so that we can gate it. This is the gating, and this is the main gate. And the reason that we have to gate it, we have to uh, provide an inlet for the bronze to come into the sculpture. So without uh, proper gating, the bronze will freeze and it won't reach the appropriate, the entire sculpture. Now we're going to take it over here to the, uh, the slurry and we're going to dip it in slurry. And the slurry is kept in suspension, if you want to have a look at that, right here. Um, professional foundries most often use this ceramic shell investment. So we'll, we dip it in the slurry and then we dip it in sand. And the sand, this is a coarser sand. There are about three different grades of sand, and I can show you the other is almost like powdered sugar. This one is like powdered sugar. So it takes several dips, probably about 10 coats of dipping from the slurry to the, each three grades of sand to build up that quarter inch coating of ceramic shell. They've poured about five or six pieces now and they should be ready to pour the jerry piece in a minute. They're gonna get out what's called the crucible. The crucible is the pot that holds the bronze and it is also made of ceramic shell which is the same material that the investment around the, the, the waxes are. a Jerry Mock um, maquette that's been poured and we're about to break the investment off of it. You can see the globe right here. Um, this was the main gate. This is where the bronze entered the piece 
and then it followed this channel uh, down into her and, and into here. If you don't put enough gates into it, uh, you have what's called a cold shot, which means that the bronze will cool before it reaches the destination, so you'll have an empty space where it should have filled. My real passion had always been sculpting. As much as I enjoyed working in advertising, and it was great fun when I was single, especially it was great fun. But my passion has always been sculpture. There's nothing more beautiful than molten bronze, which is one of the reasons I switched to casting, to bronze from clay. It's something ethereal about watching that. It, it looks like, like melting honey pouring into mold. It's terrific. And then, you know, it's, it's pretty neat, the catharsis of going from all of the steps from creating it in clay till we get to bronze. That is, um, it's breathtaking.